Do you believe that sexual harassment exists in your workplace? I believe that there's a possibility of sexual harassment existing everywhere. And I, I asked directly want, if it was in the I World Wrestling Federation. And I don't want it in my organization. I don't want it. I'd like to reiterate the question. Do you believe there is sexual harassment amongst the wrestlers or employees of the World Wrestling Federation today? There is a possibility of that. That's why I have these uh, independent investigators to come in. I'm like, people can say anything they want about Vince, they can say anything they want about WWE, but this place is awesome compared to, to the Survivor or anything. I love it. They take good care of us. Vince McMahon stands accused of covering up the alleged sexual assault of a WWE wrestler at a military base in Kuwait and of sexually harassing her according to legal documents and people who knew her. John Laurinaitis, a former WWE executive and McMahon's co-defendant in an explosive civil sex trafficking lawsuit, is also implicated. His lawyer objected to use the term cover-up but confirmed that Laurinaitis knew about the sexual assault allegations and said that most upper-level management did which contradicts WWE's claim that the executives were never made aware of them. In a sworn affidavit her lawyer released in 2019 after her death by apparent suicide, former wrestler Ashley Mazzaro said that she was injected with a paralyzing drug and sexually assaulted by someone representing himself as a US Army doctor while on tour with the WWE in Kuwait in 2006. Mazzaro also said that top WWE executives including McMahon and Laurinaitis, told her not to talk about the incident and agreed to not talk about it themselves, in part to preserve the company's relationship with the military. For the first time, the Naval Criminal Intelligence Service, or NCIS, opened an investigation into Mazzaro's allegations in June of 2019. That investigation was, however, closed in January 2020, according to an NCIS spokesperson. Further information, they said, could not be immediately released as it would need to be obtained under the Freedom of Information Act. In the years since the affidavit was released, new information had come to light to corroborate some of Mazzaro's claims and cast doubts on WWE's subsequent denial even before the statement from Laurinaitis' lawyer. Paul London, a former WWE wrestler who dated Mazzaro when they were both with the company, has also since said that Mazzaro was herself a victim of McMahon's sexual misconduct. But I do remember specifically many times when she would she would be crying to me because Vince was propositioning her to to fly on the jet with them. Like Kevin Dunn, Bucktooth Bucky would be uh, telling her that she has to fly on the jet with them, or that he might you know possibly or every now and then if she was at the you know they'd always put the divas up at like the TV hotel or whatever. You know, he'd be knocking on her door and, you know, trying to get her to answer. And it's just like, I'm shocked this Vince stuff is just now coming out. I mean, it, you know, I haven't looked up on a lot of it and like, oh, I want to get the details because I just would rather not. But I'm surprised it hasn't come out within the last 10 years. Um, but that just goes to show how afraid people are of that power dynamic where they're so fearful of losing their job or, you know, it's like, what does that say about you if you're protecting this 90 year old fucking corpse uh, with a thong ta tan line um, just because he's a billionaire? The allegations appear in a new light following the filing of a civil lawsuit accusing McMahon and Laurinaitis of sexually assaulting a WWE employee and McMahon of covering it up by strong-arming her into signing a non-disclosure agreement. Neither McMahon nor Laurinaitis is now associated with the WWE, with McMahon resigning as chairman of TKO the day after the sex trafficking suit was filed. WWE boss Vince McMahon has resigned following sex trafficking allegations from a former employee. Vince may have been influenced by John Laurinaitis, you know, now, and this is me and this is my opinion, but I believe he is as guilty as hell. I've said before, I don't think he can survive this and been wrong, um, but this one, I think, I don't think he can survive this because it's, it's too much on the heels of everything else that's come out. Ashley Mazzaro's road to WWE stardom was far from traditional, and as she said in her affidavit, it was rife with mistreatment from the start. 
In 2005, she was cast in the Diva Search, a reality competition of sorts that aired as part of the company's flagship Raw program. As the winner, Mazzara received a WWE contract and despite being, she would later say, completely untrained, immediately joined Raw as a wrestler. Welcome. Thank you so much, Steven. I'm so glad to have you here, and you've been having a really great year. You won, you won, you won, won of course, the Diva Contest. We all, yeah. we all know that. Uh, anyway, congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. Now, the contest that you won for Divas, you gave out your phone number. Yeah. To people. <laughs> I totally did. I, I, it came to me, uh, we only had 60 seconds to get the uh, audience who's watching at home to uh, vote for us, or we had to convince them to vote for us in 60 seconds. So. I said, you know, I got to come up with a way to, you know, that's original instead of just saying, hey guys, look for me, you know, yeah. so uh, I decided to put my phone number up and just see how it went. And I just literally threw all caution to the wind and just said, Let, whatever, let's just see what yeah. happens. Over the next three years, Mazzara would perform as a wrestler as well as a valet. And she also represented the WWE brand as a Survivor contestant, as well as a Playboy model before being released in 2008. In 2016, Mazzara joined a lawsuit brought by a number of former wrestlers against McMahon and the WWE, seeking damages related to the effects of traumatic brain injuries they said they had suffered while wrestling. According to a filing in that suit, Mazzara said that she had been sexually assaulted in Kuwait and that Ferdinand Rios, a WWE doctor, had reported the incident to WWE executives who soon thereafter met with Mazzara to apologize for their negligence but persuaded her that it would be best not to report it to the appropriate authorities. In a filing the next month, WWE called the claim a stale and baseless allegation and denied Mazzaro had ever reported a sexual assault to anyone affiliated with the WWE, saying she had been heard telling others that a doctor had done an inappropriate pelvic exam. The judge dismissed the case in 2018, after which the plaintiff's lawyer, Constantine Kairos, whom the judge had also sanctioned and ordered to pay WWE's fees, filed the first in an ongoing series of appeals. Mostly uh, a team of k &L Gates lawyers looking through the, the pleadings, finding a couple typographical errors, or finding some date or um, detail in the complaint, and then trumpeting that as a false allegation. So when you look at the little details of facts that the, the judge says were inaccurate, they don't make a lot of sense actually if you break it down. And a, a detailed analysis will be forthcoming when we file in a case in the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. The WWE has never wanted to work with us on a professional basis. They made liberal use of sanctions motions which are designed to attack the attorney and make that attorney take stock, give pause, and not proceed with the case. I mean, right now I'm being uh, threatened with disbarment financial ruin uh, for standing up for this group of people on pretty much uh, uh, identical claims to those brought by NFL players or other athletes in, in contexts very similar in federal courts and jurisdictions in the United States. We're not in some you know country that doesn't have rule of law. We're in a country that supposedly looks out for its workers and looks out for the people that built the business. And the matter sat there until May 2019 when Mazzaro died. And while authorities declined to publicly state the cause of death, it was reported, and her survivors have not disputed this, that it was by suicide. Well, wrestling fans and a community on Long Island are mourning the sudden death of a former star. Yeah. Liz, police are only saying that they were called to Ashley Massaro's home here in Smithtown for a sick or injured person. Massaro was from Long Island. She attended John Glenn High School in Northport, so many of her family and friends are still here on Long Island. Subsequently, Kairos published in full the sworn affidavit Mazzara had signed in November of 2017, in which she detailed the allegations about her sexual assault and the WWE's response. And I'll drop a link to the full affidavit below in the description. In the affidavit, Mazzara describes events that she said took place on a 2006 WWE tour of US military facilities in Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, and Kuwait, on which she and several other performers and staffers took part. Suffering from dehydration, the statement says that she was taken to a military base where she was given an IV and left alone. However, after a couple of hours, a man representing himself as an army doctor, along with a woman, appeared and administered another IV and took her into another room. Mazzara goes on to say that the woman guarded the door while the man proceeded to inject her with a drug that caused her to be unable to move her body or to scream. 
The man then proceeded to violently sexually assault her as well as sodomize her and that she was completely helpless to defend herself against this attack as the drug that he injected rendered her temporarily paralyzed. However, despite being unable to control her movements, she remained fully conscious for every second of the attack. Mazzara goes on to say that eventually a WWE staffer began banging on the door where the man and woman proceeded to cover her with a quilt and left the room. The staffer then proceeded to carry her away and took her back to her hotel room. Mazzara continued to say in the statement that she was not in a position to have a rape kit taken and did not report the incident to authorities. However, she did tell fellow performers about what had happened but told them not to report it to anyone. And one of those performers was Maria Canellis, who, in light of everything that's come out with regards to the Vince McMahon and John Laurinaitis allegations, recently posted the following. All the news coming out is horrible. Many of us experienced or heard rumors of different levels of evil for years. Some tried to speak up to build momentum, to change the culture. Many times we've been called bitter or crazy. Others have been paralyzed by fear. I just hope justice is served, and I hope this brings some people peace. After she returned to the US though, Ferdinand Rios, the WWE doctor, questioned her about the incident and she agreed to tell him what had happened as long as he didn't tell anyone else. Subsequently though, the statement says that he informed McMahon and Mazzara was then summoned to a meeting with McMahon, Laurinaitis, WWE production chief Kevin Dunn, as well as other men she didn't recognize but believed to be company executives or lawyers. Mazzara goes on to say in the statement that Vince led the meeting with these men and asked her to recount what happened in Kuwait. He then said that it was not in the best interest of the WWE or for her to make the information about the attack public. According to Mazzara, she was still completely traumatized at that point and she just agreed. However, it was clear that there had already been a conversation and that they had reached a decision on their own prior to consulting with her as this was not a debate, but rather Vince instructing her to keep this confidential. Mazzara goes on to say that Vince did at least apologize for what she went through, but that stressed that if she did disclose the incident, they would ruin the relationship between the WWE and the US military. And he proceeded to tell her not to let one bad experience ruin the good work that they were doing. When her claims against Vince McMahon were made public after her death, the WWE released a statement which reads, at no time was Vince McMahon or the management of WWE ever informed by Ashley Massaro or anybody else that she had been sexually assaulted, drugged, raped, or sodomized by a military doctor with a nurse standing guard while on a Goodwill tour in 2007 to US military bases in Kuwait and that at no time was there ever a meeting with Vince McMahon, Kevin Dunn, John Laurinaitis or other company executives in which she told them of such a claim and was instructed to keep it quiet. However, according to what John Laurinaitis says, which is corroborated by an interview given last fall by Rios, the doctor, that statement was not true. And Mazzaro's story has been kept alive in the years since her death by wrestling fans, the media, as well as people who knew her. I'm like, people can say anything they want about Vince, they can say anything they want about WWE, but this place is awesome compared to, to the Survivor or anything. I love my, they take good care of us. It really is a tragic and shocking story, and um, it'll be interesting to see what happens with regarding all these allegations against Vince McMahon and John Laurinaitis in the next coming months. But it, it's just sick, and I mean mentally, emotionally sick and evil. Uh, I, I wish he really just stepped aside. You know, the first time we just heard a little hint of these allegations. Yeah. And he needs to be gone and done. And I hope this criminal charge is brought if any of this is even remotely true, which with there being so many NDAs and a long list of things, it's like, I can't fathom how it isn't. Let me just say that I've made mistakes, obviously, you know, both personally and professionally through my 50-year career. I've owned up to every single one of them and then moved on. Ashley Mazzaro had one child, a daughter named Alexa, and when her daughter became sick in mid-2008, Mazzaro asked for an early release from the WWE to take care of her. 2008 or so, she got sick and I had to leave WWE. And, um, but 
now she's doing fantastic. She's 11. She's into sports. She's, um, we just moved back up to New York. On May 2022, 2019, after Mazzaro's death, several former WWE female wrestlers who were Mazzaro's co-workers grouped as the Squared Circle Sisters and opened up a crowdfunding campaign on GoFundMe in order to create a college fund for her daughter, setting a goal of $100,000. There's a sisterhood that ties all of the women in the pro wrestling industry together, a bond that is for life. And it's that sisterhood that has so many of us just incredibly devastated by the loss of a sweet, kind, amazing human way too soon. On November 21st, 2020, Mazzaro's younger brother, Ronnie Mazzaro, was murdered after being stabbed in New York City at the age of 39. And he was buried in the same cemetery as his sister. But in any case, let me know what you guys think about the whole Ashley Mazzaro situation as well as the whole shit show that is surrounding the WWE and Vince McMahon currently. And as always, thanks for watching.